Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and today's Bible reading comes from Judges 16 through 18. As always, let's open up with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking that you give our leaders guidance as they guide our nation through this time. Lord, we ask that you be with them, that you strike upon them the way that you want them to go, Lord. We ask that you bless our leaders, Lord. Sometimes that is hard, that we want our leaders to be blessed in all that they do. Lord, we ask that you once again continue to guide our nation through this terrible time. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's getting tough out there, guys. I know you guys know it. And I know the lighting is a little off. Can't be helped. It's because of time of day. Now we get into Samson and Delilah. Samson went to Gaza, and there he saw a prostitute, and he went in to her. The Gazites were, Samson has come here, and they surrounded the place and set an ambush for him all night at the gate of the city. They kept quiet all night, saying, Let us wait till the light of the morning, then we will kill him. But Samson lay till midnight. And at midnight he arose and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, and he pulled them up, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After this he loved a woman in the valley of Serech, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came upon, came up to her and said to her, Seduce him, and see where his great strength lies, and by what means we may overpower him. That we may bind him up to humble him, and we will give each, we will give each, we will each give you one thousand one hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies, and how you might be bound that one could subdue you. Samson said to her, They bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now she had men lying in ambush in the inner chamber, and she said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings, as a thread of flax snaps when it touches fire, so the strength so the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, they bind me with new ropes that have not been used. Then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in the inner chamber. Inner chamber. But he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head with a web, and fasten it tight with a pin, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his head and wove them into the web. And she made them tight with the pin and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled away from the pin, the loom, and the web. And she said to him, How can you say I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have told me, you have not told me where your great strength lies, 
and when he pressed him hard with her words day after day and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up again for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She made him sleep on her knees. And he called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his hair. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. She said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go go out, as at other times, and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with the bronze shackles. And he ground at the mill in the prison, but his hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer great sacrifice to Dagon their god and to rejoice. And they said, Our god has given Samson our enemy into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their god. For they said, Our god has given our enemy into our hand, the ravager of our country, who has killed many of us. And when their hearts were merry, they said, Call Samson that he may entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he entertained them. They made him stand between the pillars, and Samson said to the young man who held him by the hand, Let me feel the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, and on the roof there were about three thousand men and women who looked on while Samson entertained. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord God, please remember me, and please strengthen me only this once, O God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. And Samson said, <clears throat> Let me die with the Philistines. Then he bowed with all his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he killed during his life. Then his brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtol, in the tomb of Manoah his father. He had judged Israel twenty years. There was a man of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Micah, and he said to his mother, The one thousand one hundred pieces of silver that were taken from you, about which you uttered a curse, and also spoke it in my ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be my son by the Lord. And he restored the one thousand one hundred pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I dedicate the silver to the Lord from my hand for my son, to make a carved image and a metal image. Now therefore I will restore it to you. So when he restored the money to his mother, his mother took two hundred pieces of silver and gave it to the silversmith who made it into a carved image and a metal image, and it was in the house of Micah. And the, ma the man Micah had a shrine, and he had an ephod and a household gods, and ordained one of his sons who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Now there was a young man of Bethlehem and Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. 
and the man departed from the town of Bethlehem in Judah to sojourn, where he could find a place. And as he journeyed, he came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah. And Micah said to him, Where do you come from? And he said to him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem in Judah, and I am going to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said to him, Stay with me and be to me a father and a priest, and I will give you ten pieces of silver a year, and a suit of clothes, and your living, and your living. And the Levite went in, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man became to him like one of his sons. And Micah adorned the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will prosper me, because I have a Levite as a priest. In those days there was no king in Israel. And in those days the tribe of Dan, of the people of Dan, was seeking for itself an inheritance to dwell in. For until then no inheritance among the tribes of Israel had fallen to them. So the people of Dan sent five able men from the whole number of their tribe, from Zorah and from Eshtol, to spy out the land and to explore it. And they said to them, Go and explore the land. And they came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, and lodged there. When they were in by, when they were by the house of Micah, they recognized the voice of the young Levite, and they turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What is your business here? And he said to them, This is how Micah dealt with me. He has hired me, and I have become his priest. And they said to him, Inquire of God, please, that we may know whether the journey on which we are setting out will succeed. And the priest said to them, Go in peace. The journey on which you go is under the eye of the Lord. <clears throat> then the five men departed and came to Laish, and saw the people who were there, how they lived in security after the manner of the Sidonians, quiet and unsuspecting, lacking nothing that is in the earth and possessing wealth, and how they were far from the Sidonians and had no dealings with anyone. And when they came to their brothers at Zorah and Eshtal, their brothers said to them, What do you report? They said, Arise and let us go up against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And will you do nothing? Do not be slow to go, to enter and possess the land. As soon as you go, you will come to an unsuspecting people. The land is spacious, for God has given it into your hands, a place where there is no lack of anything that is in the earth. So six hundred men of the tribe of Dan, armed with the weapons of war, set out from Zorah and Eshtal, and went up and encamped at kiriath Jerem in Judah. On this account, that place is called Mahanandan. To this day, behold, it is west of kiriath Jerem. And they passed on from there to the hill country of Ephraim, and came to the house of Micah. Then the five men who had gone out to scout out the country of Laish said to their brothers, Do you know that in these houses there are an ephod, household gods, a carved image, and a metal image? Now therefore consider what you will do. And they turned aside there and came to the house of the young Levite at the home of Micah and asked him about his welfare. Now the six hundred men of the Danites armed with their weapons of war stood by the entrance of the gate. And the five men who had gone out to scout the land went up and entered and took the carved image, the ephod, the household gods, and the metal image, while the priest stood by the entrance of the gate, with the six hundred men, armed with weapons of war. And when these went into Micah's house, and took the carved image and the ephod and the household gods, and the metal image, the priest said to them, What are you doing? And they said to him, Keep quiet, put your hand on your mouth, and come with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be a priest 
to the house of one man, or to be the priest to a tribe and a clan in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad. He took the ephod and the household gods, the carved image, and went along with the people. So they turned and departed, lifting the little ones and the livestock and the goods in front of them. When they had gone a distance from the home of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out, and they overtook the people of Dan. And they shouted to the people of Dan, who turned around and said to Micah, What is the matter with you that you come with such a company? And he said, You take my gods that I made and the priest, and go away, and what have I left? What have I left? How then do you ask me, what is the matter with you? And the people of Dan said to him, Do not let your voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows fall upon you, and you lose your life with the lives of your household. Then the people of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned back and went to his home. But the people of Dan took what Micah had made, and the priest who belonged to him, and they came to Laish, to a people quiet and unsuspecting, and struck them with the edge of the sword, and burned the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Sidon, and they had no dealings with any one. It was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rehob. Then they rebuilt the city and lived in it, and they named the city Dan, after the name of Dan their ancestor who was born to Israel. But the name of the city was Laish at first, and the people of Dan set up carved images for themselves. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, son of Moses, and his sons, were priests to the tribes of the Danites until the day of the captivity of the land. So they set up Micah's carved image that he had made, as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. And that is it for today's reading. As always, be kind to one another, love one another, be a blessing to others, and get out there and see this big, beautiful world we live in. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.